Hey everyone, this video is in response to a comment which wanted us to clarify some things relating to stereochemistry. So for example, L and D, what's the difference between that and R and S, and also talking about alpha and beta carbons. So starting with R and S, let's just quickly go through those rules again. We're going to be using the Kahn and Gold prelog rules for priority. So if we have an example like this, I have coming towards me I have this OH group going away hydrogen methyl over here and an ethyl group over here this carbon because it has four different things bonded to it it doesn't have a plane of symmetry therefore it has chirality so then to figure out the chirality whether it's R or S we have to see what the priorities of the different groups that are attached are and priority is assigned based on whatever has the highest atomic number that gets the highest priority. So highest atomic number is one. And just to back up for a second, what these lines represent is the two straight lines are in the plane of the page and the wedge represents something coming towards you if it's in the plane of the page because we're trying to represent this in 3D. And then the dashed line represents the hydrogen going away. So my highest priority is the oxygen. My lowest is the hydrogen. And then down here I have two carbons so those are the same priority but when we have a tie like that we just look at the next neighbor and this methyl group the one on the right it's attached to three hydrogens whereas the ethyl group is attached to one carbon and two hydrogens so between the hydrogen and the carbon the carbon wins it's higher priority so we're gonna say that this guy is second priority and then this is third over here and then to find out whether this is R or S we go from one to three and we see whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Since this is counterclockwise, we're going to say the stereochemistry here is S. And in this case, our lowest priority group was in the back, so you wanted to have those, the dashed lines. But if it's not, for the most part, what you can do is just use a trick where you still assign priority and then go in the direction one to three and see whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. But if the lowest priority is not in the back, then, for example, if you got S, it's usually the opposite. You got S, but since the lowest priority is not in the back, if you were to flip it and have that in the back, it would be R. This works most of the time, and it has been fine for me, but it is better, just in case that doesn't actually work in the situation that you have, it is better to learn to manipulate these molecules in your head, in like visual space, and yeah, to actually rotate it and then redraw it so that you have the lowest priority in the back. And now I'll just do one more example. Here I have a carbon again, this bromide over here, OH over here, this guy going away, and then this is an ethyl group down here. So giving my priorities again, now the highest atomic number is the bromide, oxygen is now second, and then between these guys, the ethyl wins, the lowest priority is this methyl group, and now it's in the back, we do want it in the back. So we go one to three, and we see that the rotation is clockwise, so we say that's R. So that's how you look at a molecule, assign priority, and then determine whether it's R or S. So that's that way of looking at stereochemistry. What's L and D? L and D, it's based on glyceraldehyde, and it's more so for sugars and amino acids. So that was a method that was developed before we had this new set of rules with R and S, and it's still in place today because it's just been around for so long. So it's based on glyceraldehyde, which has an aldehyde over here, and then it'll look like this. This is a Fischer projection. Hydrogen, OH, okay? So this is D aldehyde. And in this case, what matters is, like this is similar to something you've probably seen a lot with sugars. Let me just make that a straight bond. You've seen this with sugars a lot, like glucose or whatever sugar you're talking about. 
this is talking about a molecule and is specifically looking at the last chiral carbon. So in glucose, you have like four chiral carbons, and it's really only the last one that the D or L is referring to. So we're talking about this carbon here. It has four different things attached to it. It's D if between the things that are on the left and right, if the one that's high priority is on the right. So because this is on the right, this is D. Whereas if I was to draw the L version of this, I'll just draw it down here. You can guess that it's going to be on the left. Hydrogen CH2OH. This is the L form of it. Okay, D versus L. So L is on the left. That one's not that hard to remember, although it stands for something else like dextrorotatory, levorotatory. I just remember L is on the left. And now if I was to assign some stereochemistry to this, in terms of dashes and wedges, in a Fisher projection, if something is a, in a vertical line, that means it's wedge lines, it's going away from you. If it's horizontal, then that's, that's wedge line. So vertical is dash, horizontal is wedge. Okay, so I fill those in. Hydrogen over here, OH over here, and then if you turn this guy into, I'm gonna zoom in so that I don't just take up the whole space. Turn this into a molecule that you can start looking at its stereo chem. Hydrogen over here, OH over here, okay? So now I'm gonna assign my priorities. I'll give first priority to this which is an oxygen, and then second priority comes over here. I'm giving priority to this carbon, remember that. Even though you see that double bonded oxygen there, you look at what's directly attached to the chiral carbon that we're looking at, and it's between this oxygen and this carbon, and the oxygen wins. So that's why it's the first priority. This guy is a second priority. This one over here is a third priority because between this and this, they're both oxygens, sorry, they're both carbons attached to an oxygen, but one has two bonds, whereas the other has just one bond. And then last priority goes to the hydrogen. And hydrogen is in, is in the back, lowest priority. So I start going this way, one to three, and I see that this is an R. It's R configuration, stereochemistry. When I do a similar thing for this L1, where you're gonna see it's, it's just going in the other direction. So I have my C, CHO, CH2, OH, and then I have my OH over here, and my H over here, and then when I draw that out, sorry, I accidentally zoomed out, when I draw that OH, this guy looks like this. Now, hydrogen is coming towards me. OH is going away. If I was just to redraw this by rotating it around an axis, then it looks like this. OH is over here. Now hydrogen is in the back. And then these guys have switched. So it's the same molecule. This, now I can assign priority to. So hydrogen is four, this is one, this is two, this is three. Going from one, two, three, that is counterclockwise. So this guy down here is S. Okay, zoom out so you guys can see everything. So here I have the D and the L form of glyceraldehyde, and then I turned it into a molecule that we can do this R and S stereochemistry prioritization on. You see that in this case, the D was equal to R and the L was equal to S. That happens when we're talking about like more simple molecules, but it doesn't always apply. So 
it's good to know how to determine if something is D or L based on the Fisher projection. And then it's good to know when you're looking at specific chiral centers, whether they are R or S. So don't just assume that you can learn one and then f just like know that if it's L, it's automatically going to be S. Don't make those assumptions. Know all of these rules and how to figure out the stereochemistry. And just going a bit more into it, I want to show you an amino acid. So an amino acid would look like this with a Fischer projection, OH over here, hydrogen, and then you have your amine group over here, and then whatever my R group is. So because my higher priority here is on the left, this is an L amino acid. So in the body, all the amino acids that we focus on, or like all the amino acids that your body uses are in the L configuration. So this is what we mean when we say that. Whenever you learn about amino acids, you always learn that, and you learn that all sugars are in the D configuration. So this is what we mean when we say they're in the L or D configuration. And one final thing to note here is that if I have this going like this, now I'm gonna be drawing glucose. So this is OH, H, OH, and then OH, and then CH2, OH. This is D glucose, okay? D glucose. When I have L glucose, it's the enantiomer. So the whole thing is flipped. Whatever was on one side is now on the other. So it looks like this now. Okay, so I said that what matters when we're talking about the stereochemistry or whether it's a D or L is the last thing. So for this D here, it's on the right. For this L here, it's on the left. But when we talk about the D or the L form of an amino acid or a sugar or whatever we're talking about, we're saying it's a complete enantiomer. So just because we assign it priority or like the D or L based on that final chiral center, it doesn't mean that only that part is flipped. So like, don't get confused about that. When you have a D sugar and they ask you, like if any question was to ask you, what's the L form of this sugar? It should be like an easy question, easy marks to get. It's the entire enantiomer, which means that all chiral centers were flipped. And that's pretty much all I had to say about R and S and D and L. And finally, just to go over what alpha and beta carbons are. If you have a carbonyl like this, that doesn't look too nice. Hold on. I want it to be pointy. Pointy. I have a carbonyl like this. This carbonyl carbon, you can just call it ipso or you can call it the carbonyl carbon. One removed is alpha and then you have beta, and then it just keeps going on and on. So the alpha carbon, when we say alpha or beta, what are we talking about? We're talking about in regards to the carbonyl carbon. So that's important for, you know, and you have beta hydro or beta oxidation when we're talking about fatty acids being broken down, and then you have the alpha carbon, it can turn into a nucleophile when we're talking about ketone chemistry or um, carbonyl chemistry. And then when we have amino acids, we often talk about the alpha carbon being the one that is bonded to the R group and bonded to the carboxylic group and the amine group and all of that. It's alpha because this is the carbonyl and then next to it is this guy, which is the alpha carbon. So that's what we mean when we say alpha or beta. And that's all I want to discuss for this video. If you guys have any other questions about any topic, make sure to leave it in the comments below on this video or another video in which that topic is discussed in the questions and then we'll try to make a quick video just to explain things and clarify the concept 
So hopefully you guys found that useful. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.